What's up YouTube? We're back at it again today and we're going to be working on the Super Beetle Starter. Uh, as you've seen in our previous video, what I'll put a link here, is we've had a really hard time with hot restarts. Um, I've done some research and it's probably a combination of the starter just being old and also as the motor warms up, the tolerances get a little tighter in the cylinders and our compression increases, uh, which is causing just a little bit too much strain for the starter. Um, and what I've read about a bunch in the forums, but can't find on YouTube, can't any pictures of, is a modification where people take the Type 1 starter, yank it out, and they replace it with a more modern starter out of a 2001-ish Jetta. So I'm gonna show you now how that's done. And what we have here is a starter I bought at AutoZone. You can see the part number here is 17305. And this should be equivalent to a Bosch, I believe it's a SR, I'll put the links down in the description below. But like I said, this uh, is common on, I believe, TDI models uh, across the board for Volkswagens from like around the late 90s uh, to the mid 2000s. So what we need to do here is remove the old starter and we'll start fitting this one up. The other reason, uh, I guess the other thing I should mention is the main reason why people are upgrading to these starters from what I've read on like the Type 1 forums is it comes with the same tooth count, I believe, as the Type 1 starter, as well as the same throw. But the big difference is, as far as torque ratings, the Type 1 sta like a standard OEM starter, I believe is rated around 0.7 kilowatts, uh, whatever that actually means. Uh, but whether or not you know the units or the conversion, these are closer to 1.8 kilowatts. So we're talking you know, almost two and a half times as much power. So hopefully that alone should solve all our problems, along with it being modern and obviously being more available as it's a newer part on, uh, I mean, there are plenty of Volkswagen type ones around, but uh, as far as like new parts or remanufactured parts, the more updated Jetta ones are just more common. So now we'll dive into removing the starter. And the very, very first thing you wanna do, anytime you're working on the starter, alternator, ignition system, is you're gonna to wanna to disconnect that battery. Um, <clears throat> there's high power coming right from the battery. In most cars, uh, there'll be a very thick line going right from the battery to the starter and then bridging from the starter to the alternator. So if you don't disconnect the battery, uh, chances are you're gonna get a pretty good shock that you're not gonna forget about. So. <laughs> Uh, I don't know all of you, but I do care about all of you. I don't want to see anyone get electrocuted. So just make sure you disconnect the battery uh, before you start anything like this. All right, <clears throat> so here's our starter. I disconnected the wire for the starter switch right here. And this was that post I was telling you about that for me connects to a fuse and then to the alternator. And this goes to the, this other line here goes to the battery. So we'll disconnect that. Then we'll take out this bolt and there's one on the lower side um hopefully i don't have to take out the intercooler surprising enough it was actually working pretty well my air intake air temps didn't get above like 80 90 degrees and all the driving i've done granted it's been cold outside but i thought this was in my heat sink pretty bad and we've been good there but um i'm hoping not to take it out of the way but we'll just have to see as we go i'm gonna leave it there until it becomes a pain in the ass all right we got the starter out and here it is side by side with the new one um gear Diameter was a, exactly the same as like 15 sixteenths of an inch. Um, <clears throat> teeth both had nine. Uh, the debt, the flange, the flange to the gear was the same. Uh, everything's pretty much exactly what you would expect. The only difference is the bolt pattern, which is where all the work comes in here. So <clears throat> I can measure it again just to be certain I'm telling you guys the right thing. But I was just measuring from the outside of the gear to the center of the hole. Um, this was about one and a half on both sides. And on this one, we are at about, let's stand this up too. See, it's even very similar. If you ignore this hole here, this one does nothing for us, but these, very similar. So from the outside of the gear here is like one 
it's funny how close they actually are. It's one and like what, five eighths versus one and a half. So it literally needs to go in one eighth on both sides and we'll be good. So I think I'll mark it with like a pen or a marker just to kind of give me a rough idea how far I need to go. And then I'll just slowly work it in because the only problem you may have is if you take too much out of one side or the other, I'm not sure if it's gonna have an issue centering itself uh, with the flywheel gear. So we'll just work it in slowly to make sure that we don't um, bias it one side to the other. All right, so what I've done is just marked in blue marker how much we need to take out. As you can see, it's really not much and it doesn't even have to be that wide. That's just kind of the diameter but, um, so I'll end up using my die grinder here, which will make really quick work of this. Uh, actually, we just need to be careful that we don't take too much off. Um, but I'll show you where we get. All right, so we took about 20 minutes or so, kind of back and forth. Uh, and we got it in here, and I only have it temporarily, just with the power. I didn't even connect it to the alternator. And with the, uh ignition switch the problem we're having is the lower stud here is actually shorter than the top one so i'm actually gonna have to pull it and replace it with a longer stud but i wanted to get in here and at least give it a test fire because i'm really anxious to see how it works all right so let's make sure we're not in gear Parking good give it some juice Let's see how it works out. Plugs in. All right. Just gonna give it a shot. First try. All right. So the GoPro died on that clip, but I think you could hear starters working. It just isn't actually engaging with the gear. It looked like we were close, but actually, when I look close, like it looked like it was connected. But I looked a little closer. There was a small, maybe eighth inch gap in certain spots of it. I think we just still haven't gotten it file fitted exactly to where it needs to be. Uh, the other problem is the stud from the original starter is actually a little too short. And I'm kind of surprised other people haven't mentioned this in what I've read in the forum. Um, maybe I don't have the factory stud in there. I couldn't even tell you, but you can see right here, this flange of the new one is significantly thicker than this flange here, probably about as twice as thick. Uh, you can see here I've made a template just to try to get a better idea, and I am close, but not spot on. Um, so <clears throat> I'll need to get a longer stud so we have no issues there, and then we'll just finish filing this out, and it should be pretty much good to go. This hasn't really taken very long. I actually ended up using my deburring tool, so the longest part was just kind of putting it in test fitting, putting in test fitting. Um, so we're really close. This is super easy, so I definitely recommend it. All right, so all we've done since the last one is open up those bolt holes just a little bit more, or I should say they were stud holes, and I replaced the short stud with a bolt for the time being just so that I could connect it. And it all seems to be seated a little bit better, so I'm having, uh, I'm being optimistic that this will be the one that works. And also no gaps between the starter and the bell housing, so. All right, so it sounded like something was gonna work that time, but I think a fuse just like instantly blew. So we're gonna go check that. 
All right, no idea what happened there. I just loosened the fuses and re put them back in. Everything looks fine. So we'll give it another shot. to go to take this out for a drive. The only thing I've done to modify the tune is add a little bit of a priming pulse. We took that away a long time ago when I had a leaking injector as kind of like a band-aid to help us get through some starting stuff without having the engine flood every time. But so we've added the priming pulse back in and the only other change is the starter. Um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, in case you didn't watch the last video, which I'll put a link right here. But what I will do is show you our most recent startup with the old starter now. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we'll show you the startup with the new starter uh, and the new settings on the Mega Square, which really aren't crazy. It's just adding the priming pulse more than anything. Um, and then we'll take it for a drive. I mean, it'll also be interesting because I guess the other thing is it's like 35 degrees out right now. So we'll see how it does with cold start. Then we'll take it for a drive, uh, get it all warmed up and everything up to operating temperature. We'll bring it home. And then if we fix our start problem, we should be able to start it right up again, even with the motor hot. If that's still a problem, then we gotta keep chasing our issue. We just got back from that ripper ride. We're at 205. So now if we turn it off and start right back up, our problems are solved. Turn the lights to be give us a little extra. Oops. Forgot to save the settings on that. Some current. Alright, let's see. Oh man, that started up perfect. All right, we'll get back to you guys in a second. All right, so that was awesome. Uh, starter's working great. Uh, credit to my wife, Juliet, real quick, because she actually went out and stood in the cold with me to get the footage to show you guys that. Um, so really cool of her. We, uh, we took it out. I got it up to about five pounds of boost. We got the tire screeching uh, in the high RPMs of second gear. So it's definitely got some power to it. Uh, it's gonna be really exciting as we get a little bit closer. Definitely need to start thinking about suspension and brakes as we're getting uh, to lean on this a little bit more. But with all that, I hope you guys learned something. I'll make sure to provide the part numbers for the Duralast and the Bosch version of the starter. So if you want to try this, um, I would highly recommend it. It only took about an a half hour or so of actually filing or grinding. And otherwise, it was really straightforward. And I mean, a uh, huge gain from, from updating the starter. So with all that, Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe for more content. Hope to see you again soon.